We're going to look at photographing impressions now. One of the important things to keep in mind is class characteristics and individual characteristics. Class characteristics, there can be several of a similar thing all in one class. All right, so we have shoes. That's a class of, of wardrobe. Athletic shoes. Well, that's a class of shoe. Nike brand. Well, that's a class of athletic shoe because there are millions of Nike brand athletic shoes. Air Jordan Model 12. Well, that's a class also. It's a subclass, okay, but it's still a class. It's a, a type of a Nike athletic shoe. Uh, Air Jordan size um, um, model 12, size 12 left shoe. That's a class too. A Nike Air Jordan model 12, size 12 left shoe with this pattern. Well, they all have that pattern. So that's a class too. Where we really want to find something is not a class characteristic, but an individual characteristic. So what could that be? Well, now if that Air Jordan Model 12 has a defect of some sort in the sole, maybe there is a, a cut in the tread. Uh, maybe there is a significant wear pattern that is discernible. Maybe there's something stuck in the tread of the shoe that was that left the impression and is still in the shoe when you get it. Those make individual characteristics. That's when we can say this is the shoe. Now, does that mean if we don't have individual characteristics that we should just not worry about the evidence that just ignore it? No. If it turns out that we have a suspect and we serve a search warrant on the suspect and find in the closet Nike Air Jordan Model 12 size 12 shoes, that's good evidence. We may not be able to say it's the exact same shoe we found at the scene, but we found one like it, and that's going to help us with our case. Getting back to the photography. When we photograph, lighting is everything. It's, if you're looking at this picture, look at these indentations. See the little shadow? Well, that's what's helping us to see the indentation. If that shadow was not there, we wouldn't even be able to see it. Uh, it would all blend. So we have these shadows, shadow, 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 shadow. Obviously, the, the sunlight or our lighting source is coming from the left toward the right, creating these shadows. We can see the Nike swish. So here is an example of an individual characteristic. This is actually a photograph of a, a cast of an impression. All right, so in the cast, we can see something. What was this from the shoe that left this in the soil? And now we have this impression. Well, there it is. So that would make um, an individual characteristic. Okay, let's move on to the photography. Photograph to show where in the scene the evidence is located and close up to show detail. Now, one other thing about the lighting here, when we look at these shadows, It also points out that we're really seeing about half of the impression. And it's because of the shadows. So in this case, this, the light is coming from the, our right to the left, kind of actually down this direction, it looks like. And we have these shadows, but on the opposite sides, there's nothing. And so we really don't even see the detail that is in the rest of that part of the impression. So truly what we need is more than one angle of light. We need more than one photograph with light from different angles in order to get all of the impression to be visible. If this is how you photograph impressions, 
you're doing it wrong. Here we have his impression and a scale. And all this investigator has done is pointed his camera straight down. Film plane parallel with his evidence. Great. No tripod, but the problem is just settling for whatever the sunlight gave. Now, the, the angle of the light from the sun might be good, but it's not going to give us everything we need. It might even be the worst angle. So don't do that. Now, we saw the video uh, the other day where they shaded the area with a big piece of cardboard. And then the photographer is looking through the viewfinder while one of them was moving the light source, a, a bright light around. And when they found, when the photographer said, hey, right there, that's where they put the flash and took the picture. That is by far the best way to control your light, to get the shadowing you need, to get the texture recorded, to see the detail in your evidence. Now, not always are you going to have someone to hold a piece of cardboard and move a light source around. So here is the other way to do it. And that is to put your camera on the tripod and use your flash by taking at least six photographs using the flash at different angles from three different directions. So you just use the tripod legs as your guide. You go ahead and stand where you can fire the flash between two of the legs at your impression and you hold the, the flash at the angle you believe is correct and you snap your picture. Then you go ahead and change the angle. So maybe you make it a lower angle in the same location but a lower angle and take a second picture. Then you move to between two other legs and you take two like photographs one at a higher angle, one at a lower angle. Then move between the last two legs, one at a higher angle and one at a lower angle. Then you are done. That way you've got six photographs and hopefully you're gonna have some good results. Now, the nice thing is you do have a review screen. So this would be a time I would definitely check my review screen. I may find that after I've taken my first set, hey, this, this lower angle is the best. And so just do lower angles for the rest. But in some way you need to maximize the lighting possibilities and not just settle for what the sunlight is going to give you. You set the camera on the tripod. The whole point is we're going to try to get the film plane perfectly parallel with our evidence and have our scale on the same plane as our evidence and have the best lighting. That's our goal. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is put my camera on a tripod so I can try to get this film plane parallel. And what I can do is then take an angle finder. So this is an angle finder here. It has a little red arrow that points straight up. What I can do with this is put the angle finder on the back of my camera to get it the right angle. So what I do is I take the big L-shaped scale and I place it in the right position around the footwear impression. Okay. Then on so I've got these two sides to the scale. So on one side, I go ahead and I put the, the angle finder and I find out what is the angle that this scale is sitting at on the ground. It is parallel with my evidence. So this will also be how my evidence is. And let's say it's 2%, 2% angle, all right? Then I go to my camera on the tripod and I put this on here and I, I tilt the camera, er, tilt the camera until it becomes 2%. Then I go back to the scale, don't move the scale, and I put this, the scale on the short end. 
and it might be 0%. And then I go to my camera and I set it on there and I tilt it to zero degrees. Now that I've done that, I am more likely to have my film plane parallel with my evidence. So then I go ahead and I do the lighting. Uh, this is a little arrow kind of device. And uh, some people will use that to show which way is north just for orientation. Um, make sure whatever you use it for, it's understood. Uh, you can also use it as a pointer for something in your picture, like some like a small item. If you're going to use it for north, it'd be nice for it to say north. So um, I have a few of these, and one of them I actually put an N on it, so that if I have it in a picture to show which way is north, uh, I can use that one, and there's no confusion what I mean by that pointer. How do you know what angles to use? Well, the deeper the impression, the steeper the angle is going to need to be. Um, if it's in the snow and you use too slow and it's a deep impression and you use too low of an angle, the light won't even get to where the impression is. So you angle it, the light that is, depending on how deep the impression is. So let's see one more explanation of how to do this. Uh, we're going to see a short video. For this video, we're going to be demonstrating how to photograph a footwear impression. So we have our scale, and what we're going to do before photographing is we're going to place it around our footwear impression that we found here in the dirt, and you want to leave at least an inch between it and your footwear impression. You don't want to damage anything. We're going to take our tripod and place it directly over the impression and we'll want to check and make sure that that's going to encompass everything. Okay, once our uh, tripod is in place, we want to find the angle of our footwear impression. So we're going to check it on two sides because what we want to do is make sure that the camera is at the same angle so that we have a parallel film plane. Lovely. Now that we have this orientated right, we're gonna hook up our flash. When you take photos of your footwear impression, you're going to want to take a total of six photos twice through every leg of the tripod at two different angles. Okay, so let's start over here on the right. We're gonna start at a lower oblique angle one more time at a higher angle. You're going to cast shadows on your footwear impression that's going to make it easier for you to view detail. And you'll want to use the best one. Lower angle. And a higher angle. And one more time from this side. As you can see, by varying the level of the flash, you get varying degrees of detail on your different photographs. As you look at the four photographs here, uh, I will tell you that these four photographs are of the same shoe, <clears throat> the same impression, I should say, all taken in the same location, same distance. The only thing that's changed is the lighting. So we can clearly see that if we just settle for lighting in one spot, or we don't try many different 
op, uh, lighting direction opportunities, we could be losing detail that won't even record. So like in here, we have uh, this one, we have a lot of detail in the heel, heel uh, here, um, losing a lot of detail in here, but yet we have it here. So angling the light, doing different directions of light and so forth, uh, very important. And then <clears throat> this is just one more. Uh, I did this uh, at one of the classes where uh, I just had the camera on the tripod. There's the impression. And I just moved the flash around a bit. And every one of these is the same impression, but you can see what the lighting does. So lighting is everything. This is the Nora Jackson trial. Uh, in this trial, the, uh, the victim, Jennifer Jackson, was found stabbed to death, and it was believed that her daughter, uh, Nora, was the suspect. And part of the evidence had to do with shoe prints, bloody shoe prints. The forensic expert, from the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation uh, testified. She said her limit, her testing was limited by the general nature of the crime scene photographs and said she could not declare any prints to be exact matches to the shoes of the defendant, Nora Jackson. And then she goes on to explain why. Uh, she said the Photographs, ideally photographs should be made with a tripod and controlled lighting with the camera directly above the print and a ruler in the frame for scale. The photos she had to work with in this case were at assorted angles, did not include a ruler. And in many cases, the details of the shoe prints were obliterated by the camera flash. So we need to make sure that we do a thorough job photographing footwear impressions. Here is a dusty shoe print on a chair, final cushion chair. And uh, I did not take this picture. My buddy, uh, Detective Joe Brown took it. And I was there when he took it. Uh, he was looking at the chair because someone had come through a window uh, at a commercial burglary and would have stepped on the chair. And when we looked with our flashlights, about all we could really see were the edges of this impression. We couldn't see all this detail on the inside. So he went ahead and took the photograph with the flash laying on the chair. So the lights just scooting across. And that, remember, all your camera sees is reflected light. And so as that light is reflecting off of the chair, it's getting recorded in one manner, but then the light reflecting off of those little specks of dust are getting recorded in an entirely different manner. And our, the camera can't blend things like our eyes do, so we actually see more differentiation between them. And the detail came out, came out really well. Footwear impressions in the snow, um, if you flip the scale over, it's black with white letters on the opposite side. One problem with photographing in the snow is that your tripod can sink down into the snow. So if you just throw out some CDs and set your camera on those, you should be fine. Lastly, uh, tire impressions are photographed in a similar manner only we do not use the L-shaped scale. Instead, you're gonna use a long scale. It could just be a yellow tape measure with nice big numbers, because what we're gonna do is just lay that scale down and then take overlapping photographs to get one full circumference of the tire. So you'll take several pictures, but there'll be one right after the other without moving the scale. And then that way you can piece them together and have your final result. 